So what is going on everybody, my name is Mehul and welcome back to another video. In this one we'll be taking a look at how you can set up additional options and finally see how we can create our instance, that is our droplet. So we have additional options here saying if you want to have an IPv6 networking, if you want to have user data and if you want to have monitoring enabled. Now you can, if you want, just go ahead and check, check this. But if you don't have any specific requirement for IPv6, I would just say just leave this out, right? Because it's not, not something that you would very much need if you're, if you're just starting out, right? So IPv6 just enables your droplet to use an IPv6 address as well with the IPv4. So yeah, you can go ahead and use that, no problem. But there's not really a benefit unless there's some use of some sort of application or maybe for some performance reasons that you really want to opt in for IPv6. You're gonna get an IPv4 anyway, right? Because that is like the de facto standard still on the web. But IPv6 is catching up, yeah. User data is something which allows you to run a bunch of things before your droplet um, is given to you, before your droplet is handed over to you, as a matter of fact. So what DigitalOcean will do is it will create the lot, create the droplet, it will boot the droplet and it will run your user data script right here. Now mind you, it's not a bash script, it's a YAML, the YAML file, but we are not going to get into that as well because it's just going to conf complicate things and it's not really required in a lot of times from the dashboard interface especially. Then we also have monitoring a monitoring uh, agent would just enable enhanced graphs in DigitalOcean. For the most part, you want it to be checked, but I'm just going to keep it unchecked for now because I will show you how to enable monitoring for a created instance later on. So yeah, let's just begin right there. So I'm just gonna keep all these three unchecked and I do not want the VPC as well. So let's just pro proceed forward. The next thing is, um, Authentication. Now you want to get into your computer that DigitalOcean droplet which you created in one way or another, right? Because you want to control it, you want to program it in order to send uh, relevant responses to maybe clients or maybe if you want to do some work on the cloud, whatever your reason is, you want to actually get into the instance. So what you have to do for that case is that you can have two options. You can either create a password that would be then a username password combination to log in into your instance or you can set up an SSH key. I would almost always recommend going for an SSH key because uh, it might seem like a hassle at the first and password might seem very convenient, you just have to write it. But SSH keys are very, very secure and compared to passwords, it will take a lot of time to actually brute force an SSH key compared to a weak password. So yeah, you're gonna see here that you have no key for yourself, so you want to create a new SSH key and it'll just prompt you with a box like this. So what you have to do is now go back to a terminal. Now if you're running Mac or Linux, you should be fine. If you're running Windows, you can download something known as um, a Git Bash, yeah. So there's a software called Git Bash, which comes with the uh, open SSH, I believe, that, that toolkit, which allows you to get access to the commands we'll be typing now. So once you are into that, just go into any folder. Preferably, you want to go into the .ssh folder, but I'm just going to keep it inside my custom folder that is called DigitalOcean Course, because I don't want to mess up my SSH folder, but ideally you want to go into this SSH folder right here, right? So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and write a command called SSH keygen. What this is going to do is going to generate two files for me. The first file would be a public key and the second file would be a private key. Public key would be used by you to authenticate that yes, you, uh, the public key, sorry, I got it around, would be used by the server. It will be stored on the server. The private key would be used by you to actually say to server that, hey, I'm authorized to log in. So private key is pretty much like your password in a, in a way, right? So yeah, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's say I name this as DigitalOcean key and I do not want any passphrase and there we have it. So you see that we have two keys, DO key and DO key dot pub. I can just show you both of these. So this is the private key and this is the public key. So what you want is you want to copy this public key right here and uh, go ahead and paste it inside the SSH key content, right? So DigitalOcean, what it will do is when it's creating your the it's creating your computer that instance that droplet, it will copy this public key over to that particular computer, which would then recognize your private key right here and will authenticate you to use that particular computer, right? So once you do that, you can just name it like. DigitalOcean tutorials. I'm just gonna make it like that. You can name it like your main server or whatever you want and just add an SSH key. So once you do that, you can just check on this and make that DigitalOcean would just transfer your key automatically. No problems there. Then finally you want to, you know, if you want to create multiple droplets of the same configuration, you're gonna do that. But in a lot of cases, you just want to create one, especially when you're creating with the control panel. And a host name is basically um, something which would be um, visible to you inside your control panel, right? So I'm going to give this as a digital D-I-G-I-T-A-L ocean tutorial, right? Tag allows you to, you know, just tag a bunch of droplets which belong to a same purpose and uh, allows you to easily manage them across firewall rules or maybe if you want to delete them all together stuff like that right so i'm gonna just leave tags for now but you can give it a tag for example custom tag for example like that and if you create a bunch of other droplets with custom tag as well later on you can basically control them in some way all together using just customizing using just rules on this particular tag so i'm just going to leave it but you can fill it here with anything you like then the project in my case i have two for you you would see only one my second project is code dam which is the actual infrastructure um where the code dam.com site is hosted so yeah i'm using DigitalOcean at the moment for code dam so you can use your own name or you can create a new project if you want projects are free so you do not have to pay for creating a project but yeah, it just helps you to customize and basically sort work related stuff with your personal related stuff. And I would almost always not recommend this enable backups, although it is recommended because it's very costly. It's 20% of the droplet price. And for the most part, you do not ever want to have a complete backup of the instance. You mostly want the backup of database, right? Because your code is something which is with you as well. It probably is, a, is on a version control system like GitHub as well. So you should be fine there in case your droplet crashes or something happens. But you want your database to be backed up and ain't nobody gonna pay a dollar a month. That is 20% of the droplet price for just backing up your database. You can just set up a very simple script which uploads your um, database on on for example let's say google drive every day and be done with it right so yeah there's that so once you do that you can go ahead and everything just check it once and everything looks good we are running ubuntu on a five dollar machine um on a new york data center we have our ssh key configured we just want one droplet no tags and that's the project let's go ahead and create this droplet so once you do that you're gonna see it starts creating your droplet for you and you already have the access to the IPv4 address that is the IP address of the droplet. You can see your configuration for the droplet. You have one virtual CPU which is shared, one GB of RAM, 25 GB SSD and it costs you $5 a month. And it just booted up real quick as well. So there's your instance. Now we're gonna be using this IP address somehow to SSH into this machine and then control it from that point. If you see right now, if you go ahead and take a look at this IP address, you're gonna see that nothing happens because obviously the server is not configured, but now on the internet, you own this IP address, right? You own this IP address and you control it. Everybody who goes to this IP address, if you configure the server correctly, can see the content you want to share with the world. 
So that's how you set up a computer, get it an IP address. We have done the first two steps. Let's move on and see how we can SSH into the computer um, in the next video. So that's all for this one. I'll see you then very soon in the next video.